कुछ नहीं बोल रहे अभी आया नहीं उनके ठीक है नमस्ते एवरीबॉडी सुमनदीप हैज आस्क मी टू शेयर दिस सेशन एंड आई एम सर्टनली ऑनर्ड आई वुड लाइक टू बिगिन बिगिन विद एन इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट डॉक्टर सुमनदीप so sumandeep has been uh, writing both in punjabi and english and she has published in journals such as south asian ensemble dialogue sambalpur studies in literature and cultures chopal literary insight a refereed international journal and renowned punjabi journal hun She has also published in newspapers such as Punjabi Tribune and Punjab Times. Dr. Sumandeep has presented papers in various seminars and conferences. Her research and publications mainly focus on the question of community and identity. Her paper enlightened uh, her paper entitled Ecological Concerns in Select Punjabi Fiction. was accepted for the 36th biannual Punjab Research Group conference held at Wolfson College University of Oxford so i welcome dr sumandeep and request her to begin her presentation please sumandeep thank you good afternoon everyone and uh, i am here to make my introductory presentation and uh, the title of my project is ecological concerns in select punjabi fiction <clears throat> i'll read my presentation and side by side i'll add some things also and uh, so so i start here uh, since times immemorial literature and the arts have engaged with the portrayal of physical environment and human environment interactions the movements related to environment have given rise to a rich array of fictional and non fictional writings dealing with humans changing relationship in the natural world however it was in the early 1990s that the long standing interest in these issues led to the initiative known as eco criticism which has mushroomed in the last two decades and continues to grow in popularity no doubt in part as a response to the growing awareness of the planet's increasing threatened environments so uh, when it comes to the literature written in punjabi there is less engagement with these urgent issues so it was in the first in the first decade of the 21st century that the ecological concerns find place in punjabi fiction so uh, we uh, do not mean to imply that in punjabi fiction there was no manifestation of a general sense of anxiety and foreboding but yeah when we try to think of the imaginative works communicated uh, uh when we try to think of the writers whose works communicated a more sense of the accelerating changes in our environment then we find ourselves at a loss of the literary novelists writing in punjabi only a handful of names come to mind that is baldev singh ramsroop anki narendra pal singh etc no doubt some other names could be added to the list but it would remain true that the literary mainstream remained just as unaware of the changes as the popular uh, population at large so my proposed research project aims to critically analyze the interrelationship and interdependence between environment and human existence through an in-depth analysis of select punjabi fiction for this purpose uh, buta singh chohan's satrangiya chidiyan that is seven colored sparrows gurnam singh garewal's tartistan the planet earth balbir parwana's gehar chadi asman fog engulfing the sky and katha is yugdi the story of this era jasbir mans akhri pind di katha the story of the last village and akhri babe last elders and jasbir rana etho registan disda hai desert is visible from here have been selected so uh, uh, it is the creation of certain contexts that paves the way for overwhelming conditions for certain processes to be unleashed without going into the context there is a greater possibility of lopsided interpretation so in order to critically analyze these texts it is very important to understand that context 
and in that the first thing which comes uh, very importantly is uh, the context of the green revolution in the districts well suited to the uptake of green revolution technology farmers were encouraged to adopt this technology consisting principally of high yielding variety seeds and chemical inputs punjab was uniquely su suited to it because of its extensive canal network which had been constructed in the colonial times and punjab government's willingness to facilitate development by building infrastructure Uh, by the end of 1960s vast majority of farmers were using the technology and wheat production had tripled punjab was established as food bowl of india while it did bring considerable short term economic benefits to punjab by 1980s and 90s things had begun to soar since 2000 this tendency had worsened and it appears that the yields had reached their maximum furthermore intensive cropping patterns have depleted soil fertility meaning that more and more fertilizer is necessary to achieve the same yield the water table in punjab as throughout much of north india is at an alarmingly low level this has been attributed to excessive unregulated use of irrigation pumps and growth in the use of water thirsty high yielding varieties of rice equally alarming there is evidence that the high concentration of agricultural chemical in surface waterways and in the aquifer is having an adverse impact on human health apart from this uh, the other contexts which are important is the land reorganization in punjab then the river waters dispute and the liberal economic policies which were adopted after 90s so these are the major factors that will become part of my contextual overview and this contextual overview would help me to further you know sharpen my theoretical framework also so uh, now i'll move to the scope of my study the proposed research project would focus on the eco critical analysis of novels written in punjabi there is no doubt that other genres like stories poetry and essays have also dealt with the issue but they do not form the part of my project the main reason of excluding these genres is that the text found in these genres are scattered whereas the novel as a genre helps to provide a holistic view of the subject however the proposed project would give an overview of how these genres have dealt with the subject a survey of the available critical studies reveals that the ecological concerns remain a little addressed in the punjabi critical discourse though individual essays have been published in punjabi on the topic they are not organized enough to form a distinct critical understanding so uh, the scrutiny of these available studies it clearly indicates that no study of a similar nature and scope has yet been undertaken in such a scenario the proposed research project gains relevance as it will attempt to study these fictional works from ecocentric perspective uh, my research questions in the proposed project are how have people related to nature in different ways at different points in history <laughs> the relationship between human and non human is of critical consideration in the interpretation of a literary text and what it has to do with evolving technologies urbanization and industrial development second uh, what do the different approaches used to ecologically understand and read literature tell about the human development about about the subjectivity and objectivity in relation to nature that is a human desire centric view of nature the project will also investigate the tendency to anthropomorphize natural world third what is the relation between urban and rural do they appear as binary opposites or complementary to each other so in this context the writings of lawrence buell serpel opperman and dana phillips would be of much help fourth how do these texts represent the marginal communities and their relation to ecology uh, amitav ghosh uh, in his uh, uh, work points out a true ecological approach always becomes a social approach it must integrate the questions of justice in debates on the environment so as to hear the cry of the earth and cry of the poor the green revolution policies increased the polarization between the rich and poor farmers and inequalities in land holdings the capital intensity of a farming also increased the gap between those who could use the new technology and those for whom it turned out to be an instrument of uh, dispossession terent brown points out that the ecological and health dimensions of the crisis have uneven effects across classes 
Next uh, question is, what kind of representation women find in these eco-critical texts? Uh, fifth, how the oral and folk traditions have affected the fictional representation of eco-critical issues to identify the contours along which the understanding of agriculture, environment, and livelihood have changed over generations. Next question is, how do the narrative modes and stylistic devices used by these novelists affect the representation of nature? The responses to these above questions become powerful tool to read the text. There are many sociological, economic, and geographical studies available which provide data about the changes in the pattern of agriculture, overuse of pesticides, deepening water level, contamination of water resources, etc. The proposed research project derives its justification from the object. Fiction dealing with ecological changes, challenges will enable us to better understand how literature confronted with extreme situations and by transcending disciplinary boundaries manages to say the unseeable. Uh, the hypothesis of my study is uh, based on my research, I propose that these literary works by tracing the ecological changes depict that we may lose not only our physical, but our cultural and spiritual bearings as well. We become unmoved from our own past and the lessons preserved in our cultural memory. Paradoxically, there is the vexing problem of the tendency to indulge in nostalgia, which often paves the way for a reductive and monolithic perception of the past as well as the present. Women are the first and worst victims of agroecological crisis here and elsewhere, but the project proposes that there is an absence of active involvement of women in issues concerning environment, agroecological revival movement, and future course of society when it comes to their representation in fiction. It is also intriguing to note the absence of significant intervention by female Punjabi novelists in issues relating to how the reorganization of land, the green revolution, and the resultant changes in ecology have affected women. The project also intends to look at the conflict between the urban and the rural, where the rural space is associated with some kind of idyllic imagination. However, the selected writings are not completely celebratory in tone, Rather, these warn of ecological threats emanating from various sources. There is a still a heavy dosage of environmental activism in the literary style of these novelists. Thus, literary fiction becomes a medium to bring together the agrarian and environmental history of the region, particularly after the partition. So uh, I'll give a brief introduction of the works which I have selected for my project. So the first is uh, Bhuta Singh Chauhan's uh, Satrangiya Chidiya, that is Seven Colored Sparrows. It shows the interrelationship between environment and human existence. The protagonist of the novel realizes the importance of natural heritage after the death of his son. He understands that the whole earth and its parts work as an integrated system, which not only direct but also determine the patterns of life. He realizes that the purpose of his life is not to rule this earth, but to blossom and wither like a flower. The novelist thus explores the levels of consciousness among humans towards the con uh, conservation of natural resources. The next novelist is Balbir Parwana. His fiction traces the ch changes in the physical and natural landscape of Punjab after the reorganization of land and the green revolution and its impact on reshaping identities is one of a few writers who have given serious thought to the hitherto neglected issues of ecology and environmental degradation in Punjab. His novel Fog Engulfing the Sky is located in Kandi area of Punjab, semi-hilly area, and presents moments in history that the novelist identifies as determinants of ecological and social problems. The story of this era deals with the issue of water pollution the protagonist, after becoming aware of the causes of pollution, considers it his responsibility to spread awareness among people of his region. The novel raises a serious question on the model of development which is leading to diseases, contamination of natural resources, and deaths of many people. Towards the end of the novel, the protagonist leaves the city and prefers to return back to his village. This shows the conflict between the rural and urban in which rural space is idealized and imagined as idyllic space. Uh, just Beerman's novels, uh, The Story of the Last Village and Last Elders is a poetic, are poetic and aesthetically rich exploration of agricultural and environmental history of Punjab. 
His works depict that the erosion of the environment is also an erosion of a human subject's conscious and material access to everything that might fall under the heading of geography. This changes the relationship between exteriority and interiority. Apart from dealing with the social and economic realities and impacts of green revolution, his works do not shy away from exploring the political implications of it and also focus on the multi-dimensional context of cultural and ecological disruption. Jasveer Rana's The Desert is Visible from Here is an account of a rapidly approaching catastrophic future. It projects us into a near future that is both all too familiar and beyond our imagining. The novel is actually an extension of its uh, uh, short story entitled Dark Zone. It signals the breadth of disruptions that the ecological crisis in Punjab will wreak across all facets of life, uprooting lives, wrecking economy, and destabilizing the region. Uh, the scope of Gurnam Singh Garewal's novel Tartistan, that is the planet Earth, is quite broad as it takes the reader across the largest vast of the globe and deals with the issue of climate change and global interconnectedness. This is the only Punjabi novel that deals with this issue of climate change. The novel refutes the common myth that the climate will change slowly and predictably and its worst ramifications will be seen mostly far away in the polar regions. Now I move to the methodology of my uh, project. Uh, the proposed research project is text-based. The analytical method enables to depict the themes of hovering on environment, whereas a close textual uh, reading helps in analyzing various aspects of eco-criticism. Comparative and contrastive methods help to analyze ecological perspectives through characters and situations. The project will also focus on stylistic analysis as it shows how the narrative styles of the novelists enrich their narratives and help to effectively interpret the novels from ecocentric perspective. So I have divided my uh, project, the chapterization is, uh, uh, I have divided it into two, uh, four chapters and first would be introduction that would give uh, the political and historical overview of the problem and then overview of how the other genres have dealt with this issue and then comparatively seeing it in terms of how I am looking at it through the novels. Then a uh, second chapter would be uh, where I'll uh, focus on the fiction of uh, uh, Balbir Parwana and Buta Singh Chauhan uh, in terms of how their fiction traces the environmental history of Punjab through fiction. And then a uh, third chapter would be symbiotic relationship between human and non-human. In this chapter, I'll analyze the fictional world of Jasbir Man. And uh, fourth chapter would be uh, imagination of place from local to global. And in this, I will be analyzing the two now, uh, to, uh, these two novelists, Jasveer Rana and Gurnam Singh Garewal, because there are many similarities in their fiction. So uh, this, this is uh, the gist of the whole project. Uh, and I'll be working on this uh, uh, project in the coming times. So I end my presentation here and I open my presentation for questions and suggestions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Sumandi, for this very uh, comprehensive and well laid out proposal. And uh, I would like to say that this is a very timely uh, intervention in terms of uh, the way we are now uh, facing this universal civilizational crisis, which is, of course, a result of our, you know, human rapacious, uh, you know, our rapacious. Uh, habit patterns that we have formed uh, in um, uh, in this you know neo-global scenario uh, i would like to like i can see that your introduction where you say that you will be looking into these uh, the other sources also not only the fictional but also you said that political and um, environmental um, like uh, background you yes, would yes, be yes. laying down so would like to bring to your notice that you know there are certain groups which are working with uh, farmers of Punjab and uh, one of them is Vandana Shiva's uh, you know some of her associates are now kind of trying to create a counter to this green revolution which has brought you know um, I mean, not only soil pollution, but also this crisis of uh, maintaining our organic seeds. Yes. 
So people like Inderjeet Singh, who is uh, incidentally also the son of uh, VP Singh, our former uh, former prime minister, he's really like engaging at the grassroots levels, and he's an associate of Vanna Shiva and looks at the Punjab region. So you might look into some of his writings also, which are coming directly from uh, the grassroots. Besides this, just uh, another suggestion which uh, came across in my own readings is a text um, published, I think, three years ago by Sopan Joshi. And this is called Jal Thal Mal. Okay. Now, this is uh, also a very uh, new perspective which is countering the, this human-centric view of nature. So this is called Jal Thal Mal and is published by, I think, Gandhi Peace Foundation. So thank you so much. We open the floor for questions and suggestions. Um, yes. Thank you. Patel, sir. Yes. Unmute, Kardeesh. Uh, sir, aapka, please unmute your uh, this mic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sir, your voice is not audible. Can we go back? No, no. Inkubulale. Sir, speaker is dekhi uske uske us par border par. No, sir. There is some problem here. Yeah. The voice is not audible here. Yeah. Right hand for Nietzsche speaker, I have to on. Yeah, yeah. So, the answer is. They are Dr. Suman. Yes, yes. Uh, Dr. Suman, uh, well, at the outset, I would like to congratulate you for. The Thank you. Uh, for your uh, you know introductory presentation. Thank you, thank you. Uh, one question come to my mind. Uh, you refer to uh, uh, I think uh, Amitabh Ghosh. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, in your presentation, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, when you you was referring him, he suggested he suggested that uh, every environmental study. Uh, actually, ultimately becomes a social study. Mm -hmm. So, how do you, you know, relate this observation to your project, to your you know proposed proposed projects? Uh, sir, as I have mentioned in my research questions, that when I am talking of this, uh, that you know, the ecological study becomes also a social study. So, uh, in this, I'll be particularly looking at how the marginal communities have been you know, represented and their relationship to uh, nature and ecology. So I'll be particularly looking at from this perspective. So I have already, uh, you know, kind of mentioned it in my my presentation. And uh, so uh, because the, the, the ecological crisis and the ecological issues which are going on in Punjab, so they do not have a kind of even effect over all classes. They have uneven effect over, you know, across different classes. So it is. It would be interesting to see how these novelists, uh, while dealing with these issues, when they are talking about you know ecological issues and you know the impact of green revolution, whether they are considering or whether they are evaluating these things that you know the uh, all these developments in Punjab, how they have impacted the you know the marginal communities. So in that you know it would be like uh, the small farmers and uh, then the people from marginal communities and women will also be you know part of that so this this would be the uh, the part of my project thank you uh asked questions uh, so he has written the crisis 
reflects in human predicament of terrorism and drug intake uh, will this also be part of your work uh, yes sir uh, uh, you know this one novelist mand he is the one who is you know kind of dealing with these issues as i have mentioned that you know uh, he is the novelist who is also who does not shy away from you know dealing with the political implications of that so this will be part of my study and uh, then uh, uh, he has uh, asked the next question within a few generations punjab went through a transition from pastoralism and promotion of agriculture as the only mode of production to the green revolution era has there been no epic novel on what this meant to different sections of the society given the extensive punjabi diaspora does the global environment concern enter punjabi literature uh, uh, sir there are uh, you know novels which have you know uh, in dealt with this issue of how the changes have come in the you know the agricultural pattern in punjab it's not that these are the only novelists who are dealing you know particularly with this issue uh, before them there are other novelists like al singh and you know those who have dealt with this issue but my concern was that you know uh, how the land reorganization in punjab then green revolution and the new policies which were introduced how they are coming into uh, you know the study and moreover there are already studies which have been you know conducted from this point of view so that is why i have you know kind of included these texts for my project uh then uh, this given the extensive punjabi diaspora so global environmental concern so yeah there are some short stories which deal with this issue and so that would be part of my overview of the project but so far as a novel is concerned so i have found only this novel which deals with this global environment concern uh, there are not many novels thank you mm, patel sir has written his question uh, he has written my specific query would be that is there anything in the fictional works which do not echo the concerns of environmentalist and go further sir your question has not become clear to me you want to say so is global development any other question or suggestion uh sumandeep ji can you see me uh can you see me and hear me Yes, sir. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, sir. Okay. I can see you. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah, uh, uh, please, may I ask a question? Yeah, sir. Please. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Okay. So my my question has to do with what I perceive as, uh, you know, the two thrusts of your work. See, mm -hmm. one is uh, ecology, as you said, and the other is feminism. Mm -hmm. You know, because you said that the first and foremost impact. of an ecological crisis is born by women mm -hmm. so my question is how do you propose to interweave these two uh, thematic uh, thrusts of your work and uh, what is the theoretical foundation for this interweaving uh sir as for uh, thank you uh you know as far as this uh, part is concerned that you know i will be dealing with how women have been represented that will be a uh, one part of my project so it's not that this uh, i have divided it into two projects uh, two parts that one will be dealing with the ecological concern and second will be dealing with the you know the feminist part so this part that how women have been represented would be one part only so looking no, no, at no i how, understood that precisely mm -hmm. that's why i asked you the question that there has to be a sophisticated interweaving it All is right. not a part by part it that is the whole point i'm trying to make it is not a part by part analysis or discussion ke pehle aap ye karenge fir wo karenge so in a sense to uh, interweave or combine the two requires a certain theoretical sophistication in the way in which you uh engage with your texts i mean i'm only saying that if you can find a way to do that then uh the work is going to be very interesting that's my point that 
Okay, it has okay. to work at two levels simultaneously. And there are many ways. One is that you can argue that, you know, nature or prakriti itself is feminized. You know, there are hundreds of ways to do it. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that you should find your own uh, particular method of interviewing these two concerns. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. Okay. Thank all right, you. All the best. Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll, yes, I'll, I'll keep in mind. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank Yeah, this does the environment change affect the lives and social position of women in Punjab? Of course, that you yeah, this, uh, yeah, this I have already mentioned. Mm -hmm. So Patel sir has sent a question again. Hello, Suman. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay, so good. One, I think. Uh, uh, it's very interesting because I'm, my work also have a certain kind of resonance, not through literary readings, but uh, being an anthropologist, uh, I did field work in Western UP, focusing on the farmers. Hmm. And I'm interested in two, three things. And if you are including or it will be having any resonance in your work, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But one thing I was thinking loudly that... Uh, the genre of uh, this sort of writing mm -hmm. has a particular historical point. All right. When novel is starting uh, addressing issue of ecological concern. Mm. And I was thinking about some So your voice is not audible. Oh, we lost. Yeah, we lost. I think you. we have lost contact with you. So you may either write your question, or have we lost con con contact with everybody? Looks like. Ah, yeah, I think so. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Um, so yeah. Satinji, you may write your uh, question, please, because we are not able to hear your voice. And uh, Itendriji also perhaps can write his question, please. Okay, uh, so I'll read again uh, what uh, Professor Patel has sent. He has asked my specific query would be that is there anything in the fictional works? Uh, which do not echo the concerns of environmentalists and do they add something or just echo the environmentalists? Uh, yeah, sir, uh, when it comes to the fictional writers and uh, so it's not that they are just adding what, uh, you know, echoing what the other environmentalists are saying. So, uh, when, I mean, the difference uh, is there when, you know, they, the, the novelist, when they're exploring with the issues, they are not just providing a data of what is happening in Punjab. And second, you know, when it comes to the relationship of the individual to his culture, to his land and soil, and, you know, uh, that whole agricultural pattern, which has sustained him uh, for a long time. So how this has changed and what kind of, uh, you know, impact it has made on the individual that becomes the part of the, you know, the, the focus of the, you know, the novelist. So this is not something which part becomes the part of, you know, when environmentalists are talking about or other studies are coming up. So uh, this, this becomes a very significant departure point, you know, from where they try to, you know, understand and analyze these issues. Thank you. So let me add something more to that. <clears throat> As because you have started the story in, in the background, you said something about, can you hear me? Yes, I can, can hear, you hear you, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, you started the whole, uh, whole. I, I mean, you're presenting a paper with, uh, with some kind of link uh, with uh, the concerns over the Green Revolution. You, you, you yes, brought sir. in that. And mm -hmm. you also brought in the point that uh, talking about environment means, in a way, talking about the society. And you also bring in something more to that. Yes. You, you, you are very familiar as a student of literature that 
talking about environment separately mm-hmm. became something very important only recently. Okay, yes. so there can be some kind of link with the earlier literature in which environmental concerns had been there in, in a different form. Hmm. And now the environment becomes a separate concern. We historians hmm. also talk about environment in a very different way in last 20 years, 30 years or so. So my point is that if this comes from outside, okay, as information, as threat, in that case, literature adjusts itself with the growing concern. And so how I, I'm interested in the fact that literature was dealing with all the issues differently. And now this kind of a threat comes from outside. So how this, this, this literature is dealing with, uh, uh, with these, these issues as literature, something which is there, already there in the literary format, so to say. Uh, sir, so far as you know, uh, this uh, Punjabi literature is concerned, so uh, both the aspects are there. That is, you know, uh, when they are dealing with these issues, the, those literary and aesthetic elements, you know, they become predominant. But yeah, it cannot be denied when I, you know, when I'm looking at the fiction written particularly after 2000, that, you know, this propagandist element also enters, you know, literature. So what, whatever is happening in the broader concern, that is, you know, the studies are coming up every day you hear, you know, what is happening and what kind of things are going to happen in the environment and from environmentalist perspective. So that is affecting the writing of literature. And it is very uh, interesting to see. Uh, and I would say that it is quite worrying to some extent also that, you know, many of the novelists writing in Punjabi have not been able to pop up with this from this perspective that they have to make a difference between, you know, where this thin line between, you know, like the literary element and propagandist element that intersects. No, why I'm bringing it, just, just a small project, Dujanda. Uh, you might have heard about Fadishanath Renu's Parthi Parikatha. Yes, that yes. is also linked with Green Revolution sort of thing. In mm-hmm. that, the literature, I mean, the, the writer, as great as Renu, virtually goes with the arguments in favor of uh, Green Revolution. So okay. that, that is the lacuna of the writer, that he did not see <clears throat> the actual realities, and he just followed what had been said uh, as positives of Green Revolution. So that makes that literature slightly, <clears throat> slightly less important. In, mm-hmm. my, in, uh, in my view. So is this care that what is being said cannot come to literature simply as something which has to be followed? I, I'm, I'm bringing this point of, of, to, to highlight that kind of caution. Uh, uh, that's all. I mean, this is what I wanted to bring in your discussion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, Sunit. Please unmute your mic. Sunitra, please unmute your mic. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my question is somewhat similar to Hitanda's observations. And I just want to ask you, do these texts, the, kind, the texts that you are referring to, uh, mm-hmm. Do they highlight the anxieties about the community or the people who are most affected by the threats of by the threats to the environment and taking place in the wake of green revolution and also the kind of prosperity poverty dichotomy because the green revolution did bring about some level of prosperity to the people because of the high yields but at the same time that was a direct threat so for the people who are practicing this agriculture, it was a difficult question. It was a question of survival, of giving up the, uh, of giving up, uh, the kind of farming that they are now the technical, uh, the, high t- the, the high technologies that they're using in the agriculture. So do mm-hmm. we find prosperity, poverty kind of dichotomy? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that is part of this literature. And I'll be dealing with that. OK. Yeah. Yes. 
any other question or suggestion okay if uh, there are no further questions then uh, we thank dr sumandeep for this very uh, precise and clear uh, framework for her research and uh, we wish her uh, good luck here for her work and thank you everybody for uh, making uh, suggestions and comments and questions good evening thank you ma'am thank you for sharing this thank you everyone